guys and welcome to Lampis. I am a biology PhD student from the University of Humboldt here in Berlin, Germany. And I submitted my thesis last year in November, which is about four months ago. If you have a problem with thesis writing, please check out my previous video where I talked about how to make the thesis writing process easier, enjoyable, and also how to write your thesis fast. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what to do after thesis submission. This is about finding jobs and hunting for jobs, especially in a foreign country. And for this purpose, I have here with me today, I'm going to interview Chris Pierre, the founder of online forum called Immigrant Spirit, where foreigners can go there and find jobs in Germany that do not require the native language speaking skill. In other words, this job only requires English speaking skills. The first thing you need to do is take a holiday. You need it and you deserve it. I recommend between a week to a month holiday. I personally took one week off just for me to relax, to recover and to recharge. The second thing to do is to start looking for jobs. The issue here is that most PhD students, especially in science, spend most of their PhD life isolated in labs conducting experiments. They don't have any knowledge about the job market, how to approach it. They don't even have a career network or they don't know how to network. And if you are a foreigner like me in a country like Germany, you have also a problem of a language barrier. For this step, I bought myself a book from Amazon and started following an online forum called Immigrant Spirit. And since I've read this book and started using the tips I've learned, I have been invited to at least three personal job interviews. I'm going to interview right now Chris Piaf, the author of the book that I read and the founder of the online forum that I have been following. So. Hi Chris and welcome to Lempis. I'm really excited to interview you and I'm sure my viewers and other fellow PhD students are looking forward to our interview. Hello Lempis, I'm glad to be here. Great. I bought your book on Amazon last year. I have it with me here titled How to Win Jobs and Influence German, A Career or a Guide to a Career in Germany. And during our interview I'm just going to place it here in the background. <laughs> Great. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, well, I'm the kind of person who um, likes to ask why. Uh, drove my parents nuts when I was a child already, <laughs> because I um, I'm never satisfied with the so superficial answers that we get mm -hmm. by everything that we do. I always try to find out the reason why is this important, how does this affect you, why you care so much. And this helped me in, in every area of my career. I uh, started out as a, well, originally I worked in the hospital as a nurse, okay. but I was a terrible nurse, uh, <laughs> very forgetful. And uh, then I became a journalist and I worked very long for radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a news anchor for local radio stations in uh, the state of Nordrhein Westfalia here in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for VDR, the biggest radio station in uh, Germany, mm -hmm. and then drifted into uh, finance journalism and uh, produced uh, news for Yahoo, for Lycos, for Microsoft, many, many others. And I had the chance when I did this uh, to move abroad. So I spent 10 years living abroad. Uh, living in uh, East Europe for a long time, in the Baltics, which I still love. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in the UK, in London, I lived in the Mediterranean, and uh, my last station was Moscow. Okay. And Moscow, honestly, was so big and uh, so overwhelming for me that I decided, okay, I moved back uh, to Germany in, in 2011. And when I came home, and then I stopped talking after that, uh, <laughs> uh, when I came home, uh, I was really shocked. Uh, shocked uh, first of all to see that while the rest of the world was moving ahead very very fast in Germany we were still discussing exactly the same things we discussed uh, before I left and the second uh, thing I recognized was unfortunately German employers um, they place very little value on any international experience that you might have True. my wife for example Yevgenia 
she used to work for Morgan Stanley in Moscow. Mm -hmm. She used to work for the Deutsche Bank in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, she once organized a private dinner between uh, the CEO of uh, Deutsche Bank in uh, Morgan Stanley in Moscow and Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany. Mm -hmm. oh. And when she came to Germany, uh, they told her, yeah, well, uh, if you would have an apprenticeship at Sparkasse, then we might have something for you. Oh. And uh, these are stories that I hear over and over and over again from hundreds and thousands of expatriates. And uh, finally, I uh, thought, well, there is a pain that I hope uh, I can um, ease. So I created a business where I introduce uh, international professionals like you uh, to German employers. And the best part of it uh, is that uh, you never have to talk to human resources. Exactly. That's so good. Actually, first, before I bought the book, I joined this online forum. And I didn't know that it was connected to the book until when I really read the book. It, it, it just, I don't know, it just happened because there are not also, there are not so many online forums for this purpose as well. Great. Um, in your opinion, what is the biggest difficulty that we are facing as foreigners to, to enter the job market here? German angst. You know, this is a, a, a term around the world now. Germans are extremely, we are very uncomfortable with uncertainty in any kind. Yes, uh, that is if true. If you want to put, it, put us on the spot and make us feel really uncomfortable, stay awake. And um, unfortunately, this leads uh, to us um, always betting on what we know already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And up to the point where it really starts to harm companies as well, not only the candidates, mm. uh, which is bad enough, uh, but the companies as well. To give you one example, um, I spent six months uh, talking to a HR lady uh, who was recruiting salespeople to sell tires to customers in France. Mm -hmm. And the most important uh, quality that these salespeople needed was they had to speak German. Because obviously when you are cold calling a company in France, German is the language you need the most. And uh, in the beginning I tried, uh, called them because I wanted to do business with them. In the end I was just fascinated. Because this, uh, this HR lady, she uh, placed a very expensive job advertisement in a very big German job portal every month, mm -hmm. got zero job applications every month, non, nada, niente, but she, still she couldn't bring herself to try something different. Why? Ah, yeah. What she does now it doesn't work, but she can always say, yeah, this is how we always run it. Ah, afraid she of cannot change. Be. And for you, um, think about your situation as an international professional. You um, don't speak German, that's the first thing. You come from a foreign country that she knows nothing about. Yeah. You have an education that she cannot evaluate. Yeah. Like I had uh, one uh, HR lady in, um, in this uh, sounds so disrespectful when I say HR lady. Okay, she, the, one head of HR mm -hmm. uh, in Münsterland mm -hmm. who rejected one of my clients uh, because uh, she said, yeah, uh, this foreign education I can't evaluate. And that lady had a master's degree from Cambridge. Oh my and goodness, If yes. you work in HR and you don't know what Cambridge is, then you understand what kind of problem you have. I can relate to that. Last week I got a call, because I am a biology student, so obviously I apply for jobs that in Germany is now natural sciences. They don't say biology, they always write natural sciences. And I have submitted my master's degrees in biology, my bachelor in biology, and they called me and said, Oh, but Lempi, you, did you do natural sciences? And I'm like... Biology is part of nature. It's true because in the German system you get always your certificate written from the faculty of natural science But in other countries you get biology, environmental biology and things like that. So yeah. they, they, they already It doesn't like... count what you actually do. It counts what's on the paper. Yeah. And you know why? Uh, because the paper is proof. Not proof for your qualification. It's a proof that the HR person did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the whole point for too many HR people. Uh, they just don't want to get blamed for making a mistake. And then additionally, and then I stop ranting, mm -hmm. uh, additionally, they also don't know the job. Uh, for me, this was the most shocking thing. I spoke to over 500 HR people uh, during the last five years. And if maybe a handful of them can tell you, okay, after one year, this uh, person needs to uh, achieve this kind of results to be considered successful, that's a lot. So HR people, they are like referees at a soccer game who don't know that the point of soccer is to score a goal. But they still should evaluate you. 
Yeah, that is true. That is true. I also, when I, after I read your book, I also used some of your tips, like I had always to call them and find out what is the most challenging, uh, or, um, like what do I have to do that is most challenging? How do I, how do I perform in these uh, positions that I'm applying for? And sometimes they just like, oh, Lem, I'm sorry, really, I have no idea. We have some expert, but they are not here. So just send your, they, sometimes they also, they don't know anything. And they're the contact yeah. persons on the, on the job application forms. Yeah, but, but here's the problem with sort itself out because um, these kind of HR people, yeah. they will be in your shoes then because they will be applying for new jobs. Ah, okay, great. Uh, in your book, I read a lot, immigrant spirit, the right mindset. What is that? What do I need as an immigrant? What is my spirit? What do I need to know? Yeah, my, my company uh, is called uh, Immigrant Spirit EMBR yeah. and not uh, Slave.com or so. <laughs> uh, because uh, my main goal is not to bring foreigners to Germany. I want to bring people uh, to Germany who have a certain mindset. Mm -hmm. um, because what's, what's the biggest difference between people who... Um, who are valuable and people who um, take space in the room, mm. I say so. It's not where you're from, it's not uh, your gender, it's not your age, it's also not your education. It's uh, how much you are committed uh, to learn and to improve yourself in order to help solve other people's problems. Uh, it doesn't matter if you work uh, in, um, in a company or for an NGO, Everything we do is to solve other people's problems, and uh, too few people understand this. That uh, that that no matter if you working for charity or if you work for profit, you have to solve a person's problem. Otherwise, you don't have a job. And I I look for people who have this. You know, first of all, uh, people who who have drive. You know, who, who ask for forgiveness and not for permission. Yeah. You know? Uh, people who have uh, stamina, because uh, you have to see things through. Um, you can't be successful if you give up after one try. Uh, people who are optimistic, because you have to believe in, in your own abilities uh, to um, get over this time of all the negative feedback that you get in the beginning. And that's very important. I mean, you have to really be strong because, you know, the, the German language and the German people are very strong when they communicate to you, they don't come with sympathy. So this is really needed. <laughs> well, we are very... Um, I don't know if you know um, uh, Hofstede, he's a very famous Dutch um, uh, soci sociologist. Mm -hmm. um, he passed away a few years ago. And he says, yeah, Germans have an engineer's mindset. You know, we believe the world is a mechanical apparatus. Yeah. And it works, uh, one thing fits into the other. And it really freaks us out um, when it doesn't, which is constantly, you know, because that's not how the world works and it's yeah. not how humans work, you know. Humans work with, uh, in the end, we work with uh, interaction. Do we care about you? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have the feeling that you understand me? Uh, do I have the feeling that you would really try to help me? And um, then, only then comes the question, are you able to help me? Well, Great. So the, the last thing is, you know, people that, uh, that want to, um, to build new relationships based on values and not on, um, on heritage or the other things. And we need lots, lots of these people. And everyone agrees in Germany that we need this kind of people, unless, um, as long as you are just theoretical. Once you become a real person, uh, then please be different, uh, but in a way that we know already. Uh, the next thing that I would like to ask you is that I know that you also do like weekly podcasts where you interview different uh, CEOs or companies that are taking foreigners or English speaking professionals. Uh, when do you do this? Like, I just want my audiences to know so they can tune in and listen to this as well and get these opportunities. When, when is it? Yeah, um, every uh, Tuesday mm -hmm. at uh, 7 p.m. Central European time. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a podcast at uh, pyak.com uh, slash podcast. Mm -hmm. So basically my name, pyak.com slash podcast. And uh, there I always interview a German employer mm -hmm. who hires in English and who has jobs right now. Oh, okay. And what I try to achieve with this podcast is uh, I ask the manager, not some HR person, but the manager, all the questions that you usually can't ask. Like, what's your biggest problem in regard to this position? Why is this problem so important? Um, what would it mean for you if you could solve this problem? Mm -hmm. What kind of persons are you looking for? And you know what is funny? I spoke with hundreds of CEOs in my life and managers. When you ask them, hey, Think of all the people you found in this position mm -hmm. and
and rank them from the best person to the worst person. What did the best person do different than the average? Mm -hmm. They always talk about attitude. They never talk about skills, education or something. They always say, yeah, this is someone, she, you know, she's constantly learning. She, I always see her with a book. Or uh, this guy, uh, he really tries to see the bigger picture. He really tries to understand how what he's doing fits into the general goals of the company. Okay. And the last thing that always comes is, yeah, you know, this girl, she really has my back. I ah, can okay. count on her. Other steps that I want to ask you about is about the application process. We do, you talk about the difference between the passive application and the active application. Maybe you can just give yeah. two or three sentences about the difference between the two processes. Well, for, for expatriates, the, the standard application process is like this. You will find an English language job, which is um, exactly 1% of German companies who hire in English, yeah. 22,000 jobs. You print out your standard CV, uh, you look over it, that there are no mistakes, and then you send it in into the company, together with a cover letter. Mm -hmm. The standard application that you send comes into the inbox of the HR person, together with several hundred other applications for these very few English jobs. And um, from the inbox of the HR person, it goes directly into reject, or mm -hmm. into the you know, ah, into the why? <laughs> uh, the know. average HR person in Germany, and there's research that backs this up, spends 7 to 12 seconds evaluating your CV, 7 to 12 seconds, and then they decide, do I read on or do I reject? And the first thing they see is, ah, you're not from here, you don't speak German, bye. So you can mm -hmm. repeat this forever, and I, I worked with candidates who had written 400 applications, yeah. only got rejections. Just like we, last week, um, you might have heard my podcast with uh, Fadi Shanan, mm -hmm. uh, a client of mine who lives in Kuwait, um, he ah, spent yes, four years... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did. He spent four years and 400 applications without getting, he got one interview out of this. And this came only to our recommendation. Mm -hmm. And then he started working with me and uh, it took him a little bit over two months, 10 weeks in total, and uh, 26 introductions. And now we got his job in Berlin and he's moving to Berlin. Oh, so my advice is, amazing. standard application process, uh, if you don't, if you don't fit into this DIN norm, this ISO norm of expectations in any way, and this can be that you are a foreigner, or you, you are too young, or you are too old, or you are the right age, but you are a woman, and oh my god, you just got married, and you yes. might have children very soon, you know? Or you look if, so different. Yeah, yeah. If, if you are different in any way, you know? <laughs> ignore the standard application process and instead find the pain. That's the thing what you have to do. And um, to find the pain, you have to ask the people who actually do the job. In other words, the department head or the manager. And reach out to him, and then instead of um, talking about yourself and what you want and how you need a job, put this to the side for a moment and concentrate on this manager and ask him, hey, what's your biggest problem? What keeps you awake at night? Mm -hmm. And I know that from everyone of our listeners, our viewers in this case, very unusual for me as a radio guy to see. Yeah. So, um, most actual problems that they will tell you about, you will have experienced something similar in your life and you will be able to offer something valuable. And if you are the person, the one person who really understands what uh, this employer wants, who cares enough, uh, enough to ask, and you can offer a solution, then you got the job. What does it matter if you speak German or not, if you can solve the problem of the yeah. manager? Great, that is amazing. I appreciate that you are giving us all this information. I'm sure all my fellow PhD graduate and students also, they are going to use these useful uh, tips that we are giving them today. Uh, I would like to know what... Uh, if you have mostly female uh, listeners, uh, my advice is, uh, sisters, you need to stick together. Mm. Men do this for centuries. We all help each other out. And uh, girls need uh, to start doing this much, much more to help each other to get ahead. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. My other question is, what are the other career products? Like, I know that you have this book that I'm reading at the moment or that I've read yeah. just a few months ago. And I know that you have also the online forum where I think on that online forum, there are also so many I can communicate or chat with other different immigrants. I have seen that. But I want to know what other career products, coaching products yeah. that I can, what other options are out there? A guarantee, a literal 
uh, guarantee that you can take to court uh, that um, if you work with me, you will get a job offer within six months or you get your money back. That and so far, amazing. I must say, um, I have a 100% success rate. Ah, okay. That okay. It's so good to hear for a PhD, like myself, a PhD student. This is all we need because it's difficult as a PhD student. We are always in the lab. We don't know anybody here. We don't have any network. So we really need like a career course, somebody who introduces us to the right people. And that is really amazing, especially if you guarantee within six months that a person gets a job. That is really good. And it seems, it seems also to be related somehow with, with um, the topic of biology because I have uh, at the moment uh, several clients who uh, studied uh, parasitology, biology, um, ah, really? this kind of things, uh, biotechnology. Um, so I have several clients in this field with whom I'm working right now. I don't understand any of this stuff, you know, I'm, I'm a you, very simple guy. Yeah, but you I understand the, you know? <laughs> the employment process. That is really good because I was a little bit hesitant because I saw so far that most of the CEO that we've been interviewing, they are only like technical graphic designer, you know, they are more into tech, um, a new startup, which are mainly just technical stuff. And ah, it's good to know that you have also clients that are just looking for biology or from the biological sciences. That is really, really good. There's a job for there's literally a job for everyone. Yeah. I'm I'm hundred percent sure. And um, what I do is actually uh, I provide this one one thing uh, before I said yeah um, the world is not mechanical you know and before you can talk about what you can contribute uh, you first need to prove that you are a trustworthy person which takes only a few minutes if you do it right but uh, you have to take this step and this is exactly what I provide my um, clients who buy this guarantee. Uh, they send me every week, every Tuesday, they send me five job offers that mm -hmm. they are interested in. Mm -hmm. And they send me uh, the names of the managers who are behind these jobs. Okay. And I show them how they can find the managers. You know, so that's something that I, I teach them. And at that point, point, they are done for the moment. And then I go, and because I, I live in Germany for 30 years, even though I lived abroad for 10 years, um, I have a huge network in Germany. So I will find the link between the manager that they want to talk to and myself and usually there's like like two people in between mm -hmm. so uh, i know david and david knows uh, tina and tina knows the manager so i will build a bridge until i'm connected to this manager and once i'm connected to the manager i will tell him i'm a business coach i work with international professionals uh, i have a client who is interested in a job with you would you like to talk with him and I just evaluated the last uh, 100 um, managers that I reached out to. 40% of them agreed to talk to my clients within just two weeks. Yeah. Uh, then uh, compare that to the results you get with a usual job application. No, application, oh my goodness. Manager. I get like, honestly, most of the jobs, especially when I was doing the passive application, I just get uh, Lida, Miss Ekanjo, Lida, Miss Ek Absa again. Yeah, they are always, I think they don't even go through, like you said, obviously they have uncertainty because you are a foreigner, you don't, maybe don't know the working ethics, yeah, so we really need career coaches, somebody who can just like help us yeah, approach this, this job market. The funny thing is, um, this introduction provides uh, the trust, because you don't go and you open your heart uh, to a total stranger, you need to have some trust, and this introduction uh, provides this, and the funny thing for me, from a psychology background is that what I do basically is I um, I borrow you a little bit of my credibility that mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. No? Because for the manager, it's um, what he sees is, hey, even though I don't know this person, someone obviously thinks that she is so valuable that they are willing to put their own reputation on stake in order to open some doors for her. Exactly. And that's what does the trick. You know, yeah. That's what makes you valuable. So. Well, that's so positive. That's so unusual when you deal with Germans all day long. <laughs> I know. You know what I... Germans say? Uh, you know what Germans say? Yeah. Nicht geschimpft ist genug geschissen. Which means like, if I don't scold you, then that's enough. You know? Yeah, it's true though. Like, uh, the German culture, they are so direct. I mean, they just don't see the necessity of saying so many polite words. It's just they have to be direct to the point, whatever the case is. I read that you are about to release a second book. I would like to know the title, a little bit of what is in... No, that's the one that I have, right? Yeah, very good. You're very upset. Yes, <laughs> so I would like to know the title of the new book and a little bit of what is in there, what we expect as readers and when is it going to be out? Yes, so 
the title of the book is uh, How to Win Jobs and Influence uh, Germans Second Edition. Okay, great. And, uh, it's an uh, updated and uh, extended uh, version of the first book because there are a lot of things happened in the last um, year. And also, to be honest, there were some printing errors in the first edition. <laughs> and uh, we fixed all of those. Okay, great. And it, um, it contains a number of, of new stories, new insights um, from the last year. Also, uh, a little bit more about how uh, the, this book and the responses from my readers affected me, what they, what they did uh, change in me, because I also profited uh, a lot from, from writing this book and from the feedback. And um, it will be out uh, officially on 1st of May, 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, especially for you and your readers, you can have a sneak preview because uh, for one week from now on, uh, the book is online already. Okay, so if you, great. If you want to get a sneak preview of the book, uh, then you can basically get it at Amazon uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, for everyone who will sign up for the book or order the book, in this week, and I know then that they come from you, uh, they will get a little present when they sign up. There's a link in the book that leads you to my site where there's something special like Oh, that is amazing. I'm excited for myself too, really. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to check it out. And I wanted to know if you also, because I know I have the uh, hard copy, but I don't know, do you also do like a Kindle version? Yes. Okay, both great. Is, uh, um, both are available right now, mm -hmm. ebook version and uh, Kindle version. And the paperback version, both of them you can uh, can order right now. I'm thinking about um, releasing an audiobook as well, but this will um, take a long time because to record uh, a full book uh, can, can tell you it takes ages, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I'm not like an audiobook person. Honestly, I do with a hard copy because I need to highlight and go back to the page later on. So it works for me very well, and I think most science students it will be okay for that as well just to have a hard copy or to have a Kindle, because in the Kindle you can also highlight that you can't do in the voice, in the well, audio. you can write on the Kindle, but just yes. one, you know. Yeah. Great. So, Chris, any extra information? I don't know, maybe there's something that is more important that I haven't talked about. Any additional information? Well, um, I just want to share how much we um, enjoy um, both of your videos, so both the education videos and also the cooking videos. <laughs> My wife already tried uh, this... Um, this porridge that you, uh, no! you made in the other one. And this is really, really high uh, high production value and really entertaining and uh, I hope you do more of that. So. Thank you. I don't know. It's just like after I submitted my thesis before I started the job application, I was like, I can't just sit home. You know, I need to find something to do and I, I'm really passionate about cooking. So I just started doing that. And to be honest, I after my YouTube, I realized that every experience is worth it. I go to job interview, and in Germany, there's now this uh, video verbum, so something like yeah. that, verbum. Okay. And yeah, I just did um, some two weeks ago, which was really successful, and I know that I was only able to do that after I've practiced with my YouTube channel, because the questions need 30 seconds of answers like it's so short and they only ask you three questions so that was really helpful so guys again thank you so much Chris Pia for the time to just hang out with me and to give us all this amazing information we appreciate it keep doing what you're doing we really need it we need somebody to help us really just get and integrate into this German market I will leave all the links to your website to your book and also to the Amazon for book purchases below this video and I look forward to working with you in the future maybe again when we release the second book we can again have a little chat about it yeah, yeah that thank you Lampy. thank you guys that was it from us today me and Chris Pia here on Lempis thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us I hope we've provided you with enough information how to approach the job market here in Germany, especially if you are a foreigner and you don't know how to speak the native language. If you like this video, please show us your support by giving it a like and subscribing to our channel for more videos, educational, travel tips and of course cooking. Till next time, ciao ciao!